Hello, everybody. This is Sherlock from the CubeSphere community. The multi-tenant system of CubeSphere represents an important part on the container platform. It underpins virtually every function and feature you are using. For large enterprises, in particular, different departments or divisions require staff of very roles to perform their respective tasks. This means they should be isolated from each other, as they are only responsible for their own resources on CubeSphere. In this regard, CubeSphere provides different levels for resource and tenant isolation. Let's take a look at the general structure. So first, we have an available platform after CubeSphere is installed. Initially, we only have one user on the platform called admin. Then you can use admin to create many users of different roles on the platform. A user may also be called a tenant on the platform. You can invite them to a workspace, which is a logical unit to organize your projects and DevOps projects. It is a place for you to control resource access and share resources within your team in a secure way. Besides, you can allocate a specific cluster to a specific workspace or multiple workspaces so that workspace resources can all run on the cluster. A workspace can also be associated with multiple clusters at the same time. In this tutorial, I will talk about the basics of the multi-tenant system of CubeSphere, which is about how to create workspaces, accounts, projects, and roles. First, let's log into the web console of CubeSphere as admin with the default account and password. For security reasons, it is highly recommended that you change your password the first time you log into the console. So uh, from user settings, you can change your password here. You can also change the default language of your console. Now let's go to access control so that we can create different workspaces and projects. Platform, access control. As you can see, we only have one workspace here. It's called System Workspace. To allow our tenants work in different workspaces, we need to grant them different roles. Let's take a look at the building roles on the container platform. In account roles, there are four available building roles as shown here. The first account I'm going to create is called User Manager. This account is mainly used to create accounts for different tenants or users. Click Accounts. Great. So the name will be user manager and enter an email here. Know that the email address entered here does not need to be a valid email. You can provide a random email address here so that you can use it to log in later. For example, um, user manager. For role, let's select users manager and enter a password. You can also enter the description here. Click OK. So we have created the first account. Know that the account admin is the default account. You don't need to create manually. CubeSphere creates this account automatically once your cluster is set up. Now let's log in as user manager. Log out and log in. As you can see currently, the user manager does not belong to any workspace, uh, which is expected. Likewise, go to access control and we can create different accounts. Here we need to create four accounts, which will be used in other tutorials namely Workspace Manager, Workspace Admin, Project Admin, and Project Regular. I will explain each account later when I create them one by one. So click Create. Let's enter Workspace Manager. So Workspace Manager will be responsible for creating and managing all workspaces on the container platform. Select the Workspace Manager, enter the password, and the description.
The next account is Workspace Admin. Workspace Admin manages all resources in a specific workspace. For the role, let's just select Platform Regular. And the description. The next row is Project Admin. Project Admin is responsible for creating and managing projects and DevOps projects and inviting new members into different projects. Note that a Kubesphere project is the same as a Kubernetes namespace. For the role, let's also select Platform Regular. And the description. The last account we are going to create is Project Regular. Project Admin will invite Project Regular to a specific project to create workloads and other resources. So Project Regular, enter the email address. Select a row, Platform Regular. As you can see, we have used the account user manager to create four accounts. We can use these accounts to perform different tasks on the container platform. Let's create a workspace first using the account workspace manager. Log out and log back in as workspace manager. Like I said, this is our system workspace. This is where our system workloads running. It is highly recommended that you do not make any adjustments to this workspace in case your cluster may malfunction. So click create. Let's create a new workspace. Enter a workspace name, demo workspace, for example. You can set an alias or just leave it blank. And for this field, let's select the workspace admin, because like I said, workspace admin manages all resources in a specific workspace. Click create. Now we have our workspace ready. We can log out and log back in as workspace admin. Here from workspace settings, Let's have a look at our workspace members. We only have one member, which is workspace admin. To allow other users to work in this workspace together, we need to invite them. Click invite member. We need to invite project regular and project admin to this workspace. So for project admin, project admin will be granted the role of workspace self provisioner. This role allows project admin to create different projects and DevOps projects Besides, grant project regular the role of workspace viewer. Click OK. Now we have three members in this workspace. Now let's log out and log back in as project admin. As you can see, the dashboard is quite different from what we can see as workspace admin. This is because each tenant is isolated from each other. Different tenants can only see resources to which they have access. Let's create a project as project admin. Click create. Enter the project name, for example, demo project, and click OK. Click the project name just created to view its detailed information. This is the overview page of your project. Basically, it tells you everything of your project. 
like application resources and physical resources. As this is a completely new project, we don't have any workloads running in this project. We can set the project quota and the default request for this project. The project quota is also known as resource quota in Kubernetes. Click set. Likewise, we have both the requests and the limits. So requests make sure a project can get resources it needs. On the contrary, limits ensure that a project can never use resources above a certain level. For example, for CPU resource request, let's set it to one core. And for memory resource request, for example, let's set it to uh, 10 GI. You can also set quotas for other resources, like deployments, stateful sets, and daemon sets. Here, we just click OK to continue. You can also set a resource default request here, which is also known as limit range in Kubernetes. When you set the values here, the container request and limit fields will be pre-populated with values when you create a workload. Here, I will just skip it because uh, I will not be using this part in this tutorial. Let's take a look at the project members. We only have one member in this project. Invite project regular to this project as well. You can grant project regular the role of operator. That means project regular will be a project maintainer who can manage resources other than users and roles in the project. And click OK. Before I move to the next step, let's take a look at advanced settings. Before you create a root, which is ingress in Kubernetes, you need to enable a gateway for this project. The gateway is an NGX ingress controller running in the project. So click set gateway. We select node port and click save. On the dashboard, KubeSphere tells you the IP address of your gateway and node port number. Note that if you want to expose services using the type load balancer, you may need to config the load balancer plugin of cloud providers. So by now you have learned how to create a workspace, a project, and different accounts. The next part is about how to create a role, a customized role. Let's log out and log back in as admin. From platform, go to access control. We have four building rows. In reality, you may want to customize your rows for different users or tenants. For example, we may need someone to maintain our cluster specifically, also known as cluster administrator or cluster admin. So let's create a row for cluster admin. Click create. The row identifier is the name of the row. So uh, for example, clusters admin and the description, the admin of clusters, edit authorization. So here you can select the permission or authorization you want this row to have. Let's take this uh, to, keep in mind that depend on means the major permission must be selected first so that the affiliated permission can be assigned to this row and click OK. Now we have this row ready. You can assign it to a user and that user will be your cluster administrator. For example, let's create the account. So a uh, cluster admin, for example, and the email address. That is the row we just created. Enter the password. Now let's log in as cluster admin. So click platform, clusters management. So this account can have a quite comprehensive view of your cluster. The administrator needs to know basically everything that is happening uh, in the cluster. 
Pay attention to the dashboard here. The account cluster admin can only see this part because cluster admin only has access to this part. Like I said, different accounts can only see sections to which they have access. Now let's log out and log back in as admin again. We have two workspaces on the container platform and we go to demo workspace. You may notice that we only have projects here, but in fact, we can also create DevOps projects on the platform. If you cannot see the section DevOps, it means this function has not been enabled on your cluster. You can go to platform, clusters management, CRDs, search cluster configuration. Let's enable DevOps first. So uh, change it to true. Click update. Go back to uh, components, wait for a few minutes and DevOps will be ready. When DevOps is ready, refresh the page and you can see the UI here. Let's log out and log back in as project admin. The section DevOps projects has appeared. Now click create to create a DevOps project. Demo DevOps, the project name. Click OK. Click the project name to view its detailed information. We can invite project regular to this project. Project regular. Grant project regular the role of operator. So after that, Project Regular will be able to create pipelines or credentials in this DevOps project. I think now you must be familiar with the multi-tenant system of KubeSphere, including how to create workspaces, projects, accounts, and roles. These accounts will also be used in other tutorials to create relevant applications or resources in different projects and DevOps projects. That will be all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.